2020 launch for the Pivot Switchblade. So the bike brings 160 mil up front, 140 mil out the back. The new for this year has got a vertical shock mount, like with a DW kind of tune link. From what we gathered during a bit of a presentation, the Dave Weagle kind of specs basically after feedback from what Pivot are looking for, a bike that will handle and they get hard suspension points and they kind of model the bike around that point. And there's a bit of back and forth between kind of fine tuning, but the bike's been in development for a couple of years now. Uh, and you can see that by how refined and how well it kind of rides. Pivot being such a small kind of boutique brand, um, generally these types of manufacturers kind of offer something different to what the mainstream are doing. And it seems like as Pivot's growing, they're trying to use this as their bread and butter bike. You would think normally you would take a lot more risks with a bike that is for an all mountain category, but I think as Pivot's growing, they don't want to kind of jeopardize that growth. By doing that, they're bringing out a bike that's not so much risky, but a proven performer. The suspension tune that comes on the bike, we had ours set up pretty much uh, straight from the owner of the company, Chris, and that's how he wanted the bike, or that's how he intended the bike to be ridden, so I haven't pretty much touched it whatsoever. It gives us a good indication of what, in his mind, he intends the bike for, like it's quite poppy and light, and it gives you like a fun feeling, like nine times out of 10 when you're on the trail, like you don't have to work for speed, it's not super stiff. It makes it quite a fun ride when you're not necessarily bombing down steep terrain. What you do notice about a, like the pivot bikes is such a clean build. Like there's, when you look at the frame, everything's been well thought out. It's uh, it's neat. The cable routing's nice. There's specs in there for like future upgrades. It's designed around having a Fox Live system if you want to have the Fox Live. Uh, some of the trails we tested on. I think would be known to a lot of Australian guys in Victoria, especially is the Hero Trail, which is just a big kind of BMX track down the hill with some lips. Uh, rolling speed was pretty smooth and you felt comfortable coming off the lips, like you weren't trying to lean back or forwards or anything, like you had a pretty neutral riding position. Um, you can carry speed through most of the things and if you did kind of overshoot or come up short, it does plenty of suspension to kind of take the, take the hit away from you. We rode some tougher stuff as well, like rode down some of the World Cup downhill tracks and uh, it's quite steep and the, the upright feeling you get from the front end having a high stack height gave you confidence but the bike even though it was XL tended to want to kind of, the back wheel wanted to pass the front wheel a few times on the way down which felt a little bit sketchy <laughs> but I don't think it'll worry the, the average Joe, I think it'll get a, they'll get a lot out of this bike. Overall it's a tight market to be in at the moment. There's a lot of bikes coming in. There's a lot of small manufacturers kicking about. And since Pivot was once a small manufacturer trying to fight the big guys, now they're starting to become a bit more of a big guy. You see, you see the best of both worlds in some ways. You see like the kind of small kind of fighter attitude where they're building a bike that's like really rider specific. Like they're not trying to sell millions of copies, but at the same time, they've got the resources to refine that bike so you're not dealing with all these little problems everywhere. If you're a Pivot fan, you'll definitely love this bike.